a while ago I wrote a study called Fibronacci. Um, the idea was to create an auto fibs study that would um, draw fibs in from peak to troughs based on a, on a look back of a, you know user configurable time. Um, so what the original one did, and, and I've, I've got that here, this is the next version where it's just the look back and you can either use the old um, and then put in your own spike percent threshold or you can use the new one. The way the old one worked was um, if you put in a, uh, it was had, had a few more options, but if you put in a, a spike percent threshold, um, it wouldn't actually create a new one until the price action was at least that percent of the latest peak to trough. So the, the, the peak here, um, which is being drawn here, uh, the, the green is, is the emulation. Um, the, the light blue here is the, um, this is the, w without the emulation. So what, what this means is the old version, the one, the one that's currently out there now, um, will wait until there's enough of a move for it to justify um, redrawing the, the fibs. And so you can see like the, the green lines here are, are pretty long. I mean, this is a one, one and a half hour um, and and the light blue is a one and a half hour that that just draws it wherever the last peak and trough was. Um, so you can see that that introduces a lot more stuff that that shows up. Um, they 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 redraw a lot more frequently unless you're actually in a retracement move. Um, but the upside of of doing it this way, the new way, is that you can actually see what that mid candle is as it's happening. So when the price action moves up to here, this becomes the new peak, and this is the new 50% mark, and this is the old trough that it's still using, and so this is the midpoint between this peak to this trough, and all of the fibs that are drawn up above, like the 161, 200, 261, are all based on, on this um, so this would be the same thing as if you were to draw your own retracements here. So if you were to draw it from here to here, um, you can see that the, the middle lines up exactly with where that is. Um, so the idea is that you're, you don't have to draw these out manually each time. And the way I programmed it the old way um, is because I, I didn't like seeing all the little clutter as it moved between. I wanted it to um, have more stable zones um, that didn't update as frequently, and it works pretty well. Usually, the ones the like the 161 marks can be depended on for um, exits and entries, um, you, you, both above and below. Um, often, price will will exceed that, but not by too much. Here, it did. Today was a, a busy day. Um, but you can often see later there's confluence. So even though like this, this fib was done being drawn here. Um, so this here is the 161 of, of this fib that's being drawn here off of later price action. Um, this is the peak and this is the trough of that. So you can see that the 161 has confluence with the previous peak. And this is, um, th there, there are a, a lot of times this, um, the fibs get spooky because they're based on, uh, Fibonacci sequence, which is, um, you, you can derive it from the golden ratio, which governs, um, you know, spiral galaxies, nautilus shells, things like that. Um, it's the same, it's the same ratio that we're using here. 50% uh, is not one of the fibs, but it's a convenient enough and it shows up often enough that it's included in with them uh, because you do want to see what a, you know, halfway between top and bottom would look like. And, and in this case, it's, it's, um, pretty good for, for determining retracements. I mean, that's the whole point is that if price comes back down, you don't want it to see it get below the 50% mark. Otherwise it risks just falling through. Um, with the new way of doing it where it just draws them in, um, you can often just hold, you can see that, that if you just uh, keep this, which was the last relatively stable one of the, the new way of doing it, um, that level is still valid for for the you know moving forward. It doesn't mean that it's just erased. It means that it just drew a new one. Um, but you can't have these lines all over the place. You but you know I mean the longer the longer and more stable it is, the more this uh, particular price level actually has meaning. And you can see that it it, it gets revisited later, um, at later in the day these same levels over and over again and with different peaks and troughs so you know that the price is zooming in on actual value here 
um, which is is pretty cool. Um, so one of the one of the ways that this works is you change you can change the look back period depending on how um, macro or micro you want your price action to be. So let me get rid of the old way of doing it. Um, I don't want to emulate. I want to just just use the the one point five. But we're gonna add a new one that is gonna be a four hour. And this will show us the difference between the look back period. So four hours here means this is how far back it's going to check for the highest peak and trough. Um, so it's going to have bigger bigger moves encapsulated in it because four hours is, is a much bigger range. Um, and actually, I should probably color the mid candle of the four hour one green so we can see the differences. And you change that in the globals here. It's pretty easy. The 50%, we're just going to make brighter brighter green so that we can obviously see the changes. Um, here it's the, the the difference between these on the one minute is uh, one hour and, a, one, and uh, one and a half hours and the reason I did it this way is so that you can see the difference between um, slight changes and it is I mean there's a there's a difference it's it's very very slight though you can see um, here where this is where it overlaps both of them and this is where the hour and a half one which is the green keeps going but the the hour one redraws down here. So it's more responsive to the more recent changes um, because in the hour long one, it this peak fell off. Um, whereas with, uh, it fell off here for the, for the, um, the hour and it fell off here for the hour and a half. So you, you can see that like the responsiveness in it, um, the smaller the time period, the more responsive those changes are going to be. So if you zoom in on, on this, um, in, in for some price action, it'll be the same, but you can see in here, this is being a little bit more responsive and drawing these new ones quicker before it, before it redraws uh, the hour and a half one. Um, so the difference between in, in this case, so we've got a four hour and a, oh, I believe it was a one hour. What was it? One and a half hour. So a four hour and a one and a half hour. Um, the four hour is the brighter green and the one and a half hour is the lighter blue. So the four hour is going to be a much larger look back period. So it's really going to go for the, the highest highs and the, and the lowest lows that it can find. And you can see that it's drawn it in here as the peak in the last four hour, or the trough in the last four hours is all the way down here. So it as soon as it gets to this spot, it draws a mid candle here, and that's where price action can start coming back. And this is the the like there's the the other um, in between uh, fibs that you can also see in there. It's uh, those would be the so you've got the 23, 38, 50, 61, and 78, as well as the zero and hundred, uh, all on the inside. And those are the ones that are um, showing up. Uh, above and below these so that's you know here here they actually line up the, between the four hour and the one hour they're they're the same um, but then they diverge a little bit uh, here they line up again and and they'll they'll do that a, a lot but then um, the one hour has has stayed here the four hour has moved on um, and by the time we get to the end of it the four hour is using the full range here so the mid candle is all the way up here whereas the one hour is only using um, the range from here to here, which is um, obviously it's it's going to be much more responsive that way, um, and and it, it's kind of up to you how you use these things. I've, I the reason I decided to rewrite it um, to have more of the junk in here, but be more accurate, is because I wanted to be able to capture um, the the actual moves as they were happening and figure out where the the fibs were being drawn. Um, mostly because when you hit a stable area, uh, like you have a, a high peak here and price just drops, so you're going to keep that peak until it falls off, until the look back period um, finds another another peak. Um, and then as soon as you find a trough, you can see where that mid candle is. And you can see here in this, in this um, it, it draws this, this mid candle, uh, the 50% the fib in before it even gets to this price action, um, it draws it all the way back here, right when it hits this trough is when it starts the new fib. So now we're doing a fib from here to here. And again, this is the same thing as if you were to draw your own your own fib lines from top to bottom, and you can see that the 50% mark is exactly where price eventually reached and then turned. Um, 
so it couldn't overcome the mid candle so it wasn't going to be as bullish which means once it turns it's got to find another another low and once it went down below the zero percent um, now it's just in free fall so it can help you inform uh, your your trading decisions for when to get in what to risk from um, risking off of a mid candle is fairly easy sometimes it pops through a little bit and comes down but if it pops through and holds it then you know that that's probably going to be a move upward um, as opposed to hitting it and testing it and then getting rejected um, and, and you can often see confluence in a lot of these levels. The, the 161s are the ones that I tend to like the most. So if you have a really stable area, um, pay attention to the, to the 161s. And that's going to be for this, it's the first purple off of the, off the low. So the negative 161 is often a place where price turns around. And sure enough, much later in the day, that's exactly where price turned around. So this is all, I mean, it's not magic this is all just based on the algorithms of buying and selling creating these patterns that are governed by these formula this is just how the numbers work this is what happens when you have chaotic oscillations um, and because the math works you're going to see this confluence over and over with these levels because the price action itself is creating these levels um, there's nothing i mean so, some people seem to think that these uh, levels are creating the price action and it's it's the opposite uh, it, it's not that people are looking at the fib here and saying this is a good place for it to turn around it's because the way the algorithms worth work draw the fib here and that's where price turns around I mean that's that's where like if you have a, a bigger move that's being captured um, mathematically it, it has a probability of reaching those levels and bouncing off because of the way these peak to trough mid-level price oscillations work um, and you can't really predict any of it because in a perfect world the price oscillation would bounce down and like a rubber band it would bounce up above the mid candle and then slightly below but not as far down until eventually it found a stable price that was just flatlined uh, but that's not how price works. Price is constantly changing. It's evolving second to second, depending on news, depending on um, investor sentiment, depending on a lot of different factors. And this for ES, I mean, it's it's a lot of different indexes that come into this. Um, so obviously, this isn't just driven by somebody, you know, some master market maker deciding they wanted price to turn here. This is built into the algorithm of how this stuff works, which is why they're so powerful. Um, so it's just another technical analysis tool that you can use, but this saves you from having to draw that. I mean, normally when you would draw fibs, you'd say peak to trough, okay, where would the mid candle be that I can expect this to turn around? And so you would draw your fib from peak to trough and rather than doing that over and over and over again, um, and it's great because you know you can, you can see these, these levels um, automatically. Uh, so this is the, the I mean, the, the main reason I, I built this thing was to be able to just find quick value, you know, from the, the last price action. Um, what is that? What does that mean? And in, and in terms of pr probabilistically predicting where things could possibly turn, um, some people use these other um, interior uh, fibs, but I tend to use the 50% the a lot more. The 50 the 0, 100, and uh, positive and negative 161, which are the, the first purple lines. Um, there's also the 200 and the 261, which um, sometimes price can get real um, dramatic and, and spike, and they'll often turn at those levels if there's nothing else up there, um, just because that's that's where the, the buying and selling um, equalizes. So anyway, I mean, a lot of this, uh, this the, the math is, Pretty, pretty simple in terms of, I mean, you just apply the Fibonacci numbers to the peak to trough to generate them. And those are just based on that golden ratio, 1.618, which is encoded in, in, in the universe. I mean, this is a, um, it's a special ratio that governs all kinds of natural processes. And so I would be surprised if we didn't see it in, in a, in a oscillating chaotic system like, like stock prices. Um, so anyway, I think it's really, really cool. Hopefully that helped explain it a little bit better and how to use it. So on a larger chart, you would want to use, um, you know, maybe 16 hours or, um, 48 hours, depending on, I mean, this, obviously this is, um, a 16 hour on a daily. So you can see this is maybe even should be more than 16 hours, um, because you want to, you want to have something useful and having it jump around too much is not all that useful. Um, 
So the larger the, the hours look back, the, the higher the peak to trough is going to be. And again, this will only work within the chart range. This is a 10 day chart. Um, so it's only going to be looking at the last 10 days worth of, of data to begin with. So anything outside that uh, data range is, is not going to feed into the calculations for where to draw this. Um, so you have to make sure you have enough data to be able to capture the look back period that you're looking for. Otherwise, you're not going to, it's just going to pick the first, the first thing it finds. Um, and, and use that. Um, so anyway, I mean, as always, if you have any questions, put them in the comments or um, look me up on Twitter. I'd be happy to answer them. And um, I'd love to know if you use it and how you use it. And I'll hopefully be uh, launching this new version soon. So by the time you see this, there should be one out there. Um, thanks for watching.